go ahead while your head is down on the mat. Let your back of your neck release and just softly going side to side there, leaning to the front. And please really tuck your chin in today while you're doing this side to side motion on the floor. And see if you can make more length in the very back of your neck. Slowly breathing up. Thank you, Michaela. Hopefully that'll fit. All right. Here we are in easy pose. Rolling up. Big breath in as we rise up. Remember, we're radiating today. So before we go to the side, let's just reach one arm at a time. And I'm thinking about lifting, extending all the way up to the sky. Like I'm gonna to touch a little star up in the air there. Radiating my arm as long as possible, letting it stretch all the way through the armpit between the rib cage and even into your lower back. And then what happens if we radiate both arms at once? Now, for me, I notice my chest wants to come up. I'm a little tight here. So I'm gonna exhale and drop my shoulders and see if I can find that long feeling through the crown of my head, through all of my fingertips, but also releasing the trapezius muscle and dropping the front of my chest so that I'm really reaching through the back of my body. And then I'm gonna take it over to your right side, radiate, feel that long diagonal body and the urge here usually when we reach to the side is for this hip to rise up, but I want you to root down through that left hip so you have that attenuation feeling. Yeah, You're separating your fingertips from that left hip. And then find a little motion there for yourself today. Maybe you're gonna wave, maybe you're gonna bend and lengthen. Big bend all the way down and around to the center. And rolling up. And we're gonna reach over to your left. Until your buns come up and then root them back down. Attenuate, lengthen between the hip and the hand. Really radiate in those two directions. And I'm gonna walk my left hand forward a little bit so that I'm helping my shoulders to stay square with my hips. I'm gonna reach and bend and reach and lengthen. I'm gonna reach and bend, reach and lengthen. And bend it all the way over to your left side. Let your body slowly curl around to the front. Feel the back of your neck along, and then roll on up. Drop the shoulders down, open up the chest real big. It's another place for us to pull that chin in. So I'm making like an extra half a chin here, yeah, in order to avoid the urge to chin poke. Often when we look up, we're trying to look up with our chin, but I want you to instead have a long back of the neck. If you're not sure, pet the back of your neck for a moment. Let's stroke that spot. You want as much length from the skull into the neck, from the neck into the skull as possible. So no sharp angles there should be felt. Arm down. And that might mean you feel like your chin's pretty far down and you're making extra chins. That's fine. It's more important for now to lengthen that neck. So I'm gonna walk my hands back. To drape your chest down and then push it out. Well, let's flow through there a little bit of times. Inhale, chest up. <sighs> Exhale, you can bend your elbows and pull your belly back and really stretch the back. <sighs> Inhale, up. Arching the whole back. It's like cat cow, but we're <sighs> hands are down on the ground behind you. Exhale, hollow out that core. Inhale, up. Long neck, rising up, 
curl, switch your legs, big breath up. And we're gonna soften down. Take your elbows all the way into your belly button. So I'm trying to pull my elbows together and really curl on your hands if you want. Pulling your belly lock in and up. So yeah, so instead of sticking out, you're gonna pull it in. And find the best angle to show you in this room. There we go. Pulling it in, hollowing it up. Inhale, rise up. Open those arms back. All right. Draw your arms forward along the mat. This is just like we do in the Warrior One. We're going to take our palms together. And I like to imagine that you're scooping up two handfuls of water. And we're going to rise up here, inhaling. And as your hands pass over your head, the water starts to trickle out and drops over your forehead and your scalp and down your spine as you exhale open. It's really cold water, yes? Yeah? So it should feel nice and refresh refreshing. One more time. Let those arms stay back. We're gonna walk them back. Please turn your fingertips towards your hips. And we're going to just wave your arms around a little bit here. Wah, 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 wah. Should feel awkward. Here, I guess facing front is what you want to see. Yeah, so chicken wing those arms. And then turn your elbows to the back. And add to that turning your elbows in. Can you press your heart forward? And feel how pressing your heart forward draws your shoulder blades around behind you. Yeah, like they're tucking in. And that helps you to hold your elbows towards each other, yeah? So using your chest, press forward to draw your shoulders down and back to tuck your elbows in behind you. Fingertips are still forward. Now, when we come to this open chest position, you always have the choice in my class to leave your hips down if it just feels too tight first thing in the class. But if you feel like you might be ready, go ahead and press your hips up. Yeah, elbows are still in, heart's trying to stay open. Chest is trying to stay long. Neck is reaching through the back of the head, so I feel like I'm making a half an extra chin. <sighs> Good, exhale down. If you notice your knees uncomfortable there or your ankles, it's because, likely because, that your ankle is bent, like it normally is in everyday life. To get up into that position, you wanna turn your foot and shin into one line because then that is one log that can roll on the floor right so if my feet are bent my ankles are bent then it's like a bumpy road right but if i straighten if i point my feet then i can roll on top of those shins does that make sense you can see it a little better if i move a leg out of the way okay there we go now let's just flow that okay because <laughs> that was a lot reverse those hands inhale exhale open try to walk your fingertips back rotate your palms in we're going to inhale and press the chest up exhale curve it down hollowing up through your core inhale and lift opening your heart and down elbows are back up your belly inhale lifting up your heart and lengthening exhale take it down check in with your elbows press optional lift of the hips come home hips come down great big arch long neck rising back upright inhale take it down to the front with your elbows together press the fingertips onto the floor and release your head Three breaths here, just relax. You want to make a counter activity of relaxation for each effort. For each stretch, we counter with release. For each radiation, we counter with grounding. All right, rolling up. Moving on a little quick today. Finding your squat yeah feet are underneath your hip sockets heels are stretching towards the earth right now turn to the side 
All right, we're gonna warm up our hands. We're gonna do that by letting them reach the floor. I need to keep my knees, sort, my arms sort of pulling my legs together, right? My upper body is much smaller than my lower body, so my elbows are squeezing my thighs, but also my thighs are squeezing together. As I shift forward, I'm gonna look down at my hands and I'm gonna make sure my pointer fingers are forward, my elbows are back, squeezing my legs. And I'm just gonna rock back and forth. And as I rock back, I'm gonna push with my fingertips to make disappointed flamingo hand. Then I'm gonna return back down, take some weight, elbows stay in, shoulders back, and push with my hands, disappointed flamingo. So here's the hands. When I look down on them, my pointer fingers are parallel up. Yeah? My elbows are in against my thigh. And when I push with my hands, see how I'm making a little space for a blueberry in the palm there? I push there, I bring all my fingers together and squeeze them down so they look like a very judgy flamingo. Yes, that it's like, hmm, is there any ice cream here? I don't know. That's your flamingos, yes? What we're doing is warming and strengthening these muscles right here, right? So if we release them, they become soft. If we squeeze our hands together and point it down, they get squishy and firm. The more strength you have here, the more you lift the pressure out of your wrist. So when we're supporting ourselves here in this right angle wrist, most of us feel an ache back here, yeah? And that's what we're going to, we're gonna make more space by pressing into the floor. Okay, go ahead and come on up into your standing pose and <laughs> circle your wrists out first, yeah. Circling those wrists out. <laughs> nice and easy. Okay, we're gonna do a wrist warmer that I gotta tell you is one of those things that I feel like I learned it and I really disliked it. And that's okay, because I also felt that it was very useful. And sometimes when something is hard, our emotional reaction is to dislike. So I'm just letting you know it's okay to have that feeling. Yeah, we don't need to be attached to that feeling, it's just a feeling. We're gonna spread our hands out really big. I like to make a joke that you're a little kid saying, <laughs> 10 years old. And then the opposite, we're gonna take our hands all the way down into a, <laughs> yeah, see my hands already like, ah. Uh. We're gonna make a fist and bring that fist down. So instead of the flamingo, it's a fist now, yeah. All of this should start getting fired up and we're gonna go open and close, open and close open and close. Can you open up your heart and draw your shoulder blades back together? This makes me sore. Like already, I'm already sore, you guys. I hope you guys are in better wrist shape than I am right now. Oh my goodness, I don't know why it's so hard for me this summer, but that's all right. It'll get easier. All right. Uh, let me know when you're feeling it, especially if you have. Okay, yeah, I see some facial expressions. Okay, good. Shake it out. Okay. <laughs> Shake it out. Whew. It shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> All right, we'll get more practice. Again, the more strength we build here, the more comfortable our wrists are going to be. And that goes not only for arm balances, but also for typing. So, stretch. Go ahead and take your left hand up. Grab it with your right hand, and what I'm trying to do is press my knuckles and my thumb into my forearm. So stretch goes across the back. I'm gonna keep it quick. We'll do a little more stretching at the end. This is that same feeling you're gonna feel when you put your knuckles down on the floor uh, in a child's pose. So you can try pressing it forward too. Switch sides. Yeah, forward is nice too, right? Opposite. So now I'm opening my fingers out and back. And you, this is really nice to do against, um, I guess against a wall, but against a desk. If you're sitting at a desk, you can press your fingers back this way too. Or use your hands. And you don't have to stand still while we do this. Let yourself move around. Okay, now I'm gonna take my thumb down and back. Down and back with a thumb. You can kind of move it around a little bit. Other side. All right, 
Okay. One habit that we're going to work on building, yeah, roll those shoulders out while we're here, is that we want to build the habit of placing our hands into the proper alignment for arm balance each time we get in and out of a plank or a modified plank in our chaturanga vinyasa, in our, in our sun salutation. Yeah, so every time basically we're putting the hands on the floor, I would like you to practice putting them in the appropriate position. So for that reason, I'm going to break it down. Our hands are going to be either straight in front of your shoulders or in front of your chest, right? Because if we're doing chaturanga, remember, the goal is to get this like 90 degree angle in the, in the elbow. So let's start with rolling your shoulders back. Abs are in. Elbows are in. Show me you're 10 years old. Lift it up in front of your hand, your shoulders, and then take those hands down in front of your elbows and feel all the ways your body wants to do this. <laughs> right? <laughs> your body would much rather be here, most likely. So feel how your shoulders rolling back and squeezing in is one action. Softly engage that core and pressing your hands forward. Now I want you to release that for a second. Last comment is take your hand please and touch your pointer finger and your middle finger knuckle. Just tap them because I want you to have a kinesthetic reminder of what it feels like in that location. Same thing on the other side, yeah? So when we tend to put our hands down at first, a lot of the time we roll out to the outer heel, which is like down here underneath your pinky and the outer side or all the way into the, the heel of the palm next to your thumb. Yes, yeah? so you can touch those two places too. When we're really supporting our weight and engaged in a way that doesn't hurt the wrist, we wanna focus the weight in these two knuckles and your thumb, the base of your thumb. Yeah, and we make that happen by thinking about pressing into the mat. I know this is so much information at once, you guys. I'm just trying to give you a bunch of vocabulary and then we'll put it into practice and that'll help it to stick yeah so a little bit of space under the palm you're pressing your front two knuckles down elbows in shoulders back abs in down front two knuckles oh my gosh that's like seven things i'm only supposed to do three at a time so it's okay if you're feeling overwhelmed is why i'm telling you if i'm telling you seven things i don't want you to feel like we're going to get all of them at once and we have the difference between our high lunge that we learned on Monday, right? Knee down towards the floor, legs are parallel versus warrior one, it's turned out. Yeah, let's do that together for a second. High lunge, warrior one. Back leg is turned out, it's okay to step it out a little bit because you wanna maintain those forward hips. Try the other side. We're gonna take all these little elements we just reminded ourselves of and then we're gonna move into our sun salutation through warrior one. So practice your high lunge for a second and your warrior one, yeah. I feel like the biggest challenge for me in warrior one is this back hip relationship because it wants to either open up towards warrior two or come back to parallel. And warrior one has two things happening, turning out the leg and pulling that hip forward. If you're a dancer, it's a great time to work your turn out. Okay. We are ready for sun salutations. Okay. Here we go. From the front. Big breath in. Exhale. Inhaling, rise. Let those shoulders already roll back and open that chest. Big, wide open shoulders. Inhale up. Think about your abs taking you forward over to a forward fold with soft legs and stay here for a moment. Release your head all the way down. See if you can relax the back of the neck as the water we're just slowly running down your spine. Good. Inhaling halfway up to your flat back. While you're there, pull those shoulder blades together. So you're opening your chest. Now, I like to come onto the balls of my feet a little bit here, but that's totally just a me thing, so it's not traditional yoga. You can try it if you enjoy it. Exhale, sink those heels back down in the floor, taking your hands to the mat. Oh, look, here we are. 
Yes. Here's our moment where we're in that crouch. We're going to make sure both pointer fingers are parallel point and they're the width of our own shoulders. And we're going to think about our front two knuckles as we step the right foot back to high lunge. And when I come to high lunge, I end up coming up onto my spider position of the hands. And that means I've got um, just my fingertips and thumb on the floor. And I like a little rock here in high lunge. Sort of check out my body before we get started. And then I'm going to look I'm going to change my back leg to warrior one. Here go hips are squared. Then I'm going to rise up. Inhale. Exhale. Open those arms behind you, just like we practiced earlier. Inhale. Scooping up that clear water. Keep pulling your forward hip back in space to square. Go down to the floor. Once again, hand position on either side of your foot. Point your fingers forward, elbows rotating back. Change your foot to high lunge first. You can put that knee down and step back to modified plank or keep it up and sit up, up back to full plank. Check your wrists. If they're too wide like mine to forward, move them in. Try a micro bend in your elbows. Big breath. And lower it down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, down. Inhale, pressing up through modified plank. Back to downward dog. All right, in downward dog today. I'd like you to press one hand and then the other off the floor and notice whether your shoulders are rising up to your ears <sighs> instead i want your shoulders back so you're going to work through those hands with shoulders back it's actually pretty complicated feeling so it should feel like a challenge and that's okay all right back to your downward dog release soften those knees everybody <sighs> when you soften your knees it's easier to push your weight towards your feet and a little less on your arms. I don't want you to feel like you're in a push-up position in your downward dog. I'd rather you have soft knees. Can you walk your hands in all the way until your thighs rest on your, I'm sorry, your ribs rest on your thighs. And release the head. I might creep those fingertips back out, my friends. Look forward, check your pointer fingers are straight forward and your elbows are wrapping you to the back of the room. We're gonna inhale up with that right leg that we started with and step it through to high lunge. As many steps as you need, as many hand movements as you need to get there. We're gonna rock back and forth. All right, looking underneath yourself. And change your back foot to warrior one. Re-square your hips. I think the best thing for squaring the hips is really the idea of centering. We're going to talk about that soon, but think squeezing your legs together. <sighs> Drop those arms down. Opening up. All right, we're going to take our arms to the sides. Big breath in. We're going to rotate from the waist. Go ahead and take your hands down on the waist. I'm feeling my hips are not square anymore. So I'm going to re-square my hips. That means I'm going to step out a little bit for me today because this hip is just tight. That's okay. Now I'm going to wind my chest towards the front leg and take my arms back out. Notice how strong the urge is to lead with this shoulder because you're trying to get it around. Instead, I want you to please roll your shoulders back. Let them be nice and wide and lead that twist from your torso using those abdominals we learned in the first week. So your uh, oblique abdominals are helping you to twist. Find that breath. Good. Bring it back forward. Reach forward towards me. Step back to high lunge. Square hips. 
Let your back foot push off. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah? And step forward to bring your foot in today. Go ahead and step it down. Melt to the floor. Inhale, halfway up. Shoulder blades pinch back and down. Exhale, drop the head, stack up all the way to the top. Hands to Namaste. Inhale, rise. Exhale, open the chest. Inhale, up. Exhale, forward. Beginning the left side. Shoulder blades squeeze back towards each other. Make sure you're lifting your abdomen in. Exhale, soften down. Enjoy that forward fold for a moment. And then left leg goes back. First a high lunge. Then you're gonna turn the back leg out. Warrior one. Big breath as you rise up. Big breath. Go ahead and take your hands to the floor. Fingertips maybe first as you change to high lunge. Find your hands on the floor. Scooch that foot underneath. You choose plank or modified plank. They're both excellent. Nice thing about modified plank is you're gonna do more for your abs and your shoulder position if you shift it forward and focus there. So I encourage you to do lots of modified planks, yeah? I want you to think about going down through your chaturanga by leaning your heart forward, almost as though you were trying to put it down a foot in front of your hands. Here you go. Your arms almost pull you into that position. Come down. Release your feet up to your cobra. Pressing here into those first two knuckles like we talked about. Pointer finger, middle finger, really press into them. Exhale down. Inhale up, modified plank. Press back to your down. Let's press back to child's pose first. Child's pose first, flip your wrists over, please. Drop your head. Big deep breaths. Come on up. See those hands before you press up. Downward dog. Left leg floating up, stepping through. Looking underneath yourself. See your hips, square them first. Then change your back leg. Re-square the hips, rise up. Take those arms forward. Let's reach our front knee forward today. And this back leg, I want you to think about almost pressing that heel in towards your center line. Yeah? That makes sense. Squeezing that heel towards your center line, it can help to square your hips. All right. Good, good, good. All right, we're going to take our hands down. We're going to look underneath ourselves and change that foot thoughtfully to full high lunge. Back foot pushes you off. You can take a bunch of steps. Find your balance. Good, good, good. Go ahead and stand onto that leg, your right leg. Lift your left knee up. Draw it to your chest. Now notice how your hip comes up with your leg for most of us. I want you to squeeze those thighs together. I know it seems weird because one leg's up, but I want you to drop that hip. Go ahead and switch sides. Before you do, lift your right hip, put it down. Lift your left hip, put it down. Now try and drop 
and drop. You can push with your hands a little bit to help feel that feeling. Yeah? Elevating your hips. All right, we're gonna lift your right leg up. Notice how the body automatically lifts that hip, but I want you instead to drop it down so it stays square despite the lift of the leg. Yeah? Here are some bus stops for this. So I went straight to mine, sorry. You can grab onto your pants, keep it low. Yeah, if you're like all the way lifted and your foot's barely off the ground, that means it's time to work on that position for balance and not worry about the height of the leg, yeah? Okay, so you can hold onto the thigh, you can hold on behind the knee. From wherever you are, you're gonna start to extend that leg. Again, your body's gonna try to stretch you out. I want you to maintain that balance. Okay, switch, we'll come back to that. Onto your right leg, lifting up to your bus stop. Maybe it's right here and you're just working on that balance. Maybe it's a little higher, you're grabbing the middle of your thigh, maybe right behind your knee. Extend that leg. As your leg straightens, your body is going to try to drop the thigh to get to straight because of tightness in the hamstring. So don't straighten it all the way. Instead, maintain wherever you put your thigh. Yeah? Go ahead and soften. We'll go to the other side. Slowly up. Hips stay even with the floor. If it's tight over here, rather than letting everything fall down to straighten, get to a less straight position. Where is the less straight position that you can get to maintaining your hips? Radiate through those toes. Release. One more time each side. If you're just falling over like crazy, but you know you have more flexibility and you want to try this last time getting your leg higher, you can hold on to a wall or a chair back, yeah? So one more time each side. I think we're lopsided actually. I think you still need a left and a right and a left. Yeah, so if you know that you can get your leg a little more stretched but you've been really fighting with that balance for the last few tries, go ahead and find something to hold on to to help you this last pair. Okay, ooh, we're gonna save that song for later. Okay, all right, here's our last one. Remember what we said on the first day? Yoga is not a competition. It's not a competition. You should be proud if your leg goes from here to here over the course of the egg semester. Yeah, lifting your leg four inches higher is a huge deal. Don't expect to put your leg where someone who did can-can for multiple years does. I work hard here. If you're working hard here, that's your place, that's your moment, that's your experience. That is where the nobility and the growth happens. So please don't devalue that or judge it as being less than, because it's really not. It's a really important part. Okay, moving on. We've been talking about external rotation of the legs for Warrior 1 and 2. We're going to move into the Warrior 2 flow. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So for today, we're going to pass into our Warrior 2. And remember, before we get there, hips are trying to be upright, yeah? So sometimes our booty swings back to let us off the hook. Sometimes, well, sometimes it swings to the side. Sometimes it swings back and we lean forward. I'm telling you this so you know what the cues look like from the side because I'm going to do it the other way today. All right, big breath in. Go ahead and bring your hands to Namaste, which is this place of greeting. Lift up through your belly lock and your root lock and lift your right leg back. Touch the toe. Yeah? Go ahead and grow your arms tall in parallel. This is called balancing stick or warrior three yeah bust up a for warrior three is just toes on the floor I'm gonna turn to the side mm -hmm. toes on the floor don't forget your belly we want to engage it and lift out of the hip 
and as we get deeper into level letters of bus stops the change is happening in your hip socket yeah here's C D is flat you can hold on to your hips if you like I tend to lift my hip open when I do warrior three like high lunge you want to keep it flat it's really hard in the outside of your standing leg that's where most of the challenge is go ahead and step back to high lunge you did it Hooray! all right open your hips out to warrior two please yeah all right look upon your alignment that front knee always falls in. So we use our under butt to keep the front knee over the ankle pointing forward. Your back leg is straight, but not locked out, but very straight and perpendicular to your front leg. Hips are flat. Arms are wide, gazing out over the front. As you're feeling it, you can get in a little bit deeper. We're gonna roll our shoulders today. Up, inhale, exhale back. Up, inhale, exhale back. Up, inhale, exhale back. Oh, I don't remember what we forgot on the other side there. Okay, we'll weave that in. Go ahead and bend your arms up like you're a cactus. Bring those arms forward of your shoulders. Now rotate everything front because that's weird feeling and weird feeling is fun. Make a big effortful twist, pulling through your left side towards that left front. Even though your hip is back, go ahead and take your hand back to that back hip. Feel the difference. All right, good. We're gonna take our front elbow down to your front knee for side angle pose. And we're gonna circle this arm today. Big breath in. Exhale, rotate your palm back, wipe your palm around on the wall behind you. Inhale, you can curve your body. Wipe it back. Take that hand down to the floor, changing your back leg to high lunge and then low lunge. That means your right knee is down on the floor, opening up those hips. Pulling your pelvis back, we're gonna stretch your left hamstring. Inhale, shift it back forward, opening up those hips. Opening up your back hip. Can you turn your back leg out? I know it's tricky ask. Rotating that back thigh out. Big deep breaths. All right, bring it back parallel. Back to high lunge. Look back out to warrior two. Open the hips to stack yourself back up. Walk up your leg if you need to. Coming back to your warrior two. Booties underneath you. We're gonna straighten the front leg. It should feel a big, really like ah. We're gonna heel toe that back leg closer. Hips are gonna go to the right. Left leg straight, right leg straight. Find your spot. Nice straight arms, let's circle them. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Find a place to rest, could be on your thigh, could be on your shin, could be on your ankle. Looking up in the air, finding your breath. Remember in triangle pose, we're pressing our under hip underneath ourselves so that we can try and get it in line with the hips and shoulders. Before you come up, can you drop your shoulder down in front of yourself? And then bring your arm back up and notice whether your habit is to leave this shoulder in front of your neck. It's very common, yeah? Can you roll your shoulders back here? Soften your legs to counterbalance back up and step together. Whew. All right, let those arms float up circles again take your hands to your shoulders please roll those shoulder blades down 
and flap your wings before we go on the other side. All right, can you roll your elbows so that the bottom of your elbow is rolling slightly forward? Yeah, not straight to the side, but slightly forward. It's gonna help your shoulder blades to roll back. So experiment with that feeling. Can you get your shoulder blades to roll back and together and your elbows to come slightly forward? Yeah, extend your arms out. From the side now, your arms are slightly forward of your body, yeah? Now, if you have done dance, you can re-rotate those elbows up, but I still want your elbows to be slightly in front of your shoulders for all of these things that look straight in the camera. They're actually slightly not straight, yeah? Can you see the slight difference? It's really subtle, but it'll really help your rotator cuffs get in position. Let's come to the front. Let's take our hands down to our hips immediately this time. Stepping back, adjust those hips up and down a couple times. Find your warrior three, bus stop A. Bus stop B, you haven't tipped any further, you just engage the glutes. Go back to bus stop A. Bus stop B, lift the leg. Bus stop A, there's no movement in the hips between A and B. A, B, A. It's like the difference between a tondu and a degage if you're a dancer, yeah? All right, if you're moving on from bus stop B, you could come to C, which is 45. Reclose those hips if they open. Keep your hands on your pelvis as you come into this flat back. I think the hardest part about this pose is that it really requires you to balance using the outside of your standing leg hip. Radiate toes away from your hands. It will help you balance. Attenuate. Stepping back. Turn it all the way out to warrior two. Adjust the width of your warrior two. Good, 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 good. Tailbones dropping down. Abs are in. Front knees reopening. And remember all these little motions we do, we kind of rerun through this checklist on sort of a rolling movement basis. Roll those shoulders. Arms are slightly micro in front of the shoulder sockets. So you're thinking about pulling your shoulder blades down and back. Good, good, good. Arms straight in front of your shoulders. Flex at the elbows. Elbows are now in front of your shoulders. And we're gonna rotate from the waist. So I'm pressing my back hip back so it stays in warrior two. And I'm rotating my shoulders front. Use those obliques. You're creating a lot of torque. Take your left hand back. Check that hip is still square. Twist a little more. Find your breath. Release. Come all the way to high lunge, to the mat, to low lunge. Separate those thighs. Inhale, take it back. Stretching your front hamstring. Inhale, shift, exhale into your lunge. Turn your back leg out for a moment. Experiment with opening that leg outside. And that will change from your vastus medialis hip flexor to your psoas opening if your leg is a little more turned out, but both get stretched in both cases. Come back to parallel. Come back to hamstring. Exhale into it, release into it. Go ahead and shift your weight back into high lunge. Come on back up. All right, from the front. Go ahead and take that right leg back to high lunge. Drop the knee. Drop the tailbone. 
High lunge. Drop the tailbone to vertical. Switch them. Knee back. Drop the knee. Straighten the pelvis. All right, take it back down. Turning out. To warrior two, you're gonna take your right hand to your right elbow, your right elbow to your right knee, and come into your side angle. Circle through that chest, inhaling up with the arm. I'm rotating my palm to the back of the room and trying to open my armpit and my pectoral muscles as I wipe my arms down behind me. Inhale, stretching between the shoulder blade and the spine here, stretching the rhomboids with that curl. Come on up, staying in your warrior two until you choose to release. Heel toe, heel toe it in. And now your hips go over into your left leg. Let's roll our shoulders back here. Go ahead and touch your shoulder with your hands and feel that feeling of rotating your elbows under to the front. From there, extend your arms. Make sure you're holding your belly gently in so we're not um, dropping our waist forward. Find a place to rest your hand anywhere except the knee. Remember, we never put our hand weight into the knee. It's always above or below. Find your bus stop. Pressing that lower hip underneath yourself. Looking up to the top. Soften both knees to rise back up to warrior two. This is a small warrior two now, right? Tiny warrior two. Go ahead and twist around to the front and change to high lunge. And we're gonna spread those arms up and wide. Rotate your elbows underneath a little bit forward. <sighs> Radiate from one side finger to the other side finger and rotate in to the front leg. We're gonna exhale, we're gonna take your left hand down to the mat and step your, uh, mm, let's put our back leg down. Yeah, so your back leg is down. I believe it is your left hand and left knee. We're going to send our right leg back to a supported, mm, I guess it's a half moon, a low half moon. Go ahead and take that knee down. Your knees are together. Now you're in a modified side plank. Bring it back to the front. Oh look, you're in a modified plank. What are we gonna do? We're gonna check that our fingers are facing forward and our elbows are rotated back. Little micro band. Roll those shoulders back, hard forward. We're gonna roll to the other side plank. Pressing as much as you can into those first two fingers and knuckles. Lengthen through your body. So I tend to come up with my hips higher because I'm stronger in my legs. And so I wanna readjust by attenuating, radiating through the spine. And then I'm gonna shift to make that flat line. I can move my hand too. I'm gonna lower that leg, shift my hand out, come back to modified plank, adjust my hands, choose whether you wanna to come to full plank, press back to downward dog. Everybody from downward dog, bend your knees, Look between your hands and bend your elbows towards the floor. This is called the puppy pose. It's very bouncy. Ah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bounce it a little bit. Keep squeezing those elbows around in towards each other, like when they're trying to go to your belly button. Exhale as you press back. <sighs> Hop it forward. Boink. And roll it up, friends. Good job. Exhale. Let yourself come down to mountain pose, which is feet together, standing up straight. Palms are open to the front. In anatomy, this is like the neutral anatomy pose. Roll your shoulders back three times with your breath. Okay. 
Let your heart reach an inch forward more than it might normally. Feel your shoulder blades engage your upper back. Radiate through all 10 fingers. Spread them out big and wide. Get a little bit taller. Can you let your weight roll into the balls of your feet? Exhale, settle back down. All right, we're gonna stand on your right foot. We're gonna lift up the left foot. And this time, instead of forward, we're gonna take our left hand to the inside of that thigh and hold it here. Again, your hip's gonna wanna come up with that leg that's a whole different position, dropping that hip down. In fact, everybody put your foot down. You are so sassy in this position. Sassy, -E -E, yes? Okay, so now I want you to feel the sass by rocking those hips up and down, yes? Now we did warrior three today for the first time, so you might already feel a little sore when you press it out here because this medius and minimus, gluteus, medius, and minimus have already worked, yeah? We're gonna use them to pull your hip back in line and shift into that to lift this leg, yeah? Bust up A, hips are even with the floor, stretch that leg out. Now, in the flat screen, it looks like I'm flat. I'm so not flat, you guys. Neither should you be. Knees are forward. This other foot is really on essentially 45, yeah? And that's where I want it to be because of the shape of your hip socket bones. If you wanna hold on to a wall or a chair here, by all means, feel free. Work on those even hips, yeah? Extend that leg. Let's bust up B. C is a little bit higher. You can also change where you're holding on, but let's switch sides first before we get fully extended. Okay, now we're gonna step on your left leg. This is just like a bus stop A from your tree, right? So you can hold on to something if you want. You're gonna grab inside of the thigh. Why is inside important, you may ask? Because if I am outside, it's gonna turn my knee back to the front. So you wanna grab inside of that thigh and extend it. You can extend it out Toe still on the floor, your bus stop A, yeah? Option to hold on to something. Bus stop B, you're extending it low. Your hands on the middle or towards the edge of the thigh. You can also, definitely holding on to something, hold on to your calf. Let it go for now. We're gonna try both sides again, okay? First time through, I like to do it a bit lower and focus on balance. Find where you're gonna go, try. If you got your balance last time, try something a little higher. Everything is forward of my body, even though it looks flat in the camera. Camera also makes my leg look really long on the diagonal, so that's pretty funny to me, because look, my standing leg looks much shorter than my lifted leg. <laughs> Cameras are just so funny. All right, switch to the other side. Turn it out. Okay, switch, knit it out, soften those hips, let's circle. So our exercise today is going to involve inner thigh stretching. When we're doing all those high lunges, low lunges, warrior ones, we're mostly talking about stretching your quads, your hamstrings, and your hip flexors. For your inner thighs are the adductors. You will see them in a future set of anatomy videos in your playlist. Um, I think it's next week. But let's come on down to the floor. And what we're gonna work towards today is just like um, we talked about all those arm, arm position things, we're gonna do a little bit of build up of the positions of your legs and we're gonna try it first seated on our buns and then we're gonna try and lift it up on our feet and hands, yeah? So first things first, a nice stretch in the middle, yes? I'm gonna take my right heel and I'm gonna bring it into my groin in the center of my crotch on my center line. And I'm pointing this out because the temptation of your body is probably going to be to lean out somewhere in the diagonal area, whatever, depending on your body. I'm gonna point this foot, it's more comfortable for me. And I'm gonna try to lean my shoulders and hips straight forward. Now, 
If you're really tight in your legs, that's already a no-go. So if that's true, we want to start with a bent knee. And I encourage all of us, including myself, to start with a bent knee anyway, because I can take my elbow to the inside of this thigh, help to push it back so that it's definitely knee up. The other thing your body's going to try and do is point this knee forward to avoid stretching that inner thigh. So point that knee up with me, both hips on the ground, elbow inside the leg, tip your belly forward onto your foot. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see what I mean. Yeah, <coughs> I'm pushing this knee back with my elbow and I'm leaning forward, yeah? My body wants to drift over the bent leg to avoid the stretch. It wants to drift out of the stretch, yes? So your job here is to breathe into this squarely. Let your head go. And let's find that breath again. Now, if you are more flexible, you can slowly release this knee. If it's close to the floor and you start feeling it behind the knee, a great thing to do is to make a, a soft fist and shove the fist under your calf is really nice. And then my forearm is holding that knee open. It's really much more comfortable for me. Go ahead and find your breath. Remember then, this is not a competition. What you want is to find the stretch in your adductor, so the inside of the long thigh, whether it's super bent, and that's where you feel it the most. What you want is to prioritize this feeling, the inner left thigh. I also feel the outside of my right upper bun hip area. That's okay too, as long as I'm not skipping the long legs inner thigh. Okay, let's come up and switch sides. Same instructions. Now your left heel is going into the center of your body. Both hips are on the ground. Right knee's gonna start bent. We're gonna all come forward bent first, yeah? Try and get your tailbone out behind you because it's not gonna really stretch your thigh if what you're doing is bending your chest mostly. We wanna get the weight of the pelvis to tip forward by bending that knee as much as need be, yeah? All right, keep on with that stretching. I just wanna take another moment to talk about um, the very common and, and expected response to last week's playlist, which was playlist A, which was that it was hard. And lots of you felt like you couldn't do everything that was in all of those videos. And yes, that's what I expected. And that's good, yeah? The reason why I put those videos in there, um, namely there's a Shiva Ray one, and there was a Chelsea Chorus one, right? The Chelsea Chorus one is the one about building your own practice. And the challenging part in that is that she's doing like kickups into handstands. Yeah, I can't do that. Me, I can't do that. I don't expect you to be able to do that. But I really like the idea about how she discusses taking a thoughtful approach to what you want to get out of practicing on a regular basis. And I think it's good to let yourself see what potential could arise. And know that people practice yoga their whole lives. Like you're not supposed to be able to do it on day one or it would be boring, right? So please take that to heart that I want you to know that you have potential and that growth is a positive thing and that there's no need to judge or berate yourselves for not being advanced at something, especially when we're just starting it or just coming back to it. All right, let's switch stretch. And then I hope that can be a teachable moment for yourself about an opportunity to get rid of your brain weasels. What's a brain weasel, Amber? It's definitely an Amber word. <laughs> brain weasel is what I call the negative talk in your head, yeah? So 
I like to do this little visualization where when I hear that voice in my head talking, I kind of pinch it right here and I pull it. It looks kind of like a ferret. It's very wiggly and sometimes it's long and I bundle it up into a bundle like a roly poly and I throw it out the door. And there's something about that ritual of miming it that helps me laugh a little bit and let go of that habit. I don't believe negative self-talk helps you. I don't believe that it motivates you more than strategic goal setting. I think that it eventually pulls the rug out from underneath us when we tell ourselves that we aren't worthy. And I want to take this moment to come out of the stretch and to look you in the eyes and to tell you that you are welcome, that you are worthy, that you belong here, that you will grow, and that I believe in you. Yeah? If you're my student, I love you. And I want you to know that. So please, and this is going to seem stupid and obvious when I say it, but don't talk shit about my students. Pardon the French. Yeah? You would never say, oh, that person over there can't do that. Look at their body. Ew. You would not say that. So please don't say that about yourself because you're my student and I'll get all lining on your buttons, okay? All right. Hearts and stars. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get back to this crazy wild plan. All right, we're gonna come down here. I'm gonna wiggle my butt nice and low. A little sway here. So both of my knees, they look like they're pointing to the side of the room. They're really on 45 degree angle. Let's big, big stretch up. Big press it down. We're passing through the um, horse riding pose, yeah? Big breath in. I like to say, we're going to down to Abbey when we're here. <laughs> All right, I like to use my shoulder blade opening and press my thighs back here. Give it a try. Sit down big. Find that fiery breath. One more. All right, melt it down. We're going to turn our knees in to travel down to the center. Hang your head down on the middle and just sway it. Sway your back. Sway it, sway it, sway it. All right. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Get somewhere where you can see me for a moment. And uh, bend your knees as much as you need to. See if you can put your hands on the mat in the way we talked about. Pointer fingers forward. I'm going to move my legs so you can see. Pointer fingers forward, elbows back, yeah? Can you do that somewhere? If you really squat, maybe your legs are in. And it's okay if not. It's okay if not. An alternate pose here right now, if not, is to do it against the wall. Or maybe you got a chair. Yeah, you can lean against a chair. But practice squeezing those elbows towards each other. Remember, we want to eventually have our elbows lined up with our armpits. So lots of squeezing here. That's your pecs. Okay, let's roll it up. Flop those arms out. Let's come down to seated again. All right. I know this is an up and down off the floor. Up and down, up and down is tiring. So you're getting your workout, right? Some people hate that. So I just like to acknowledge that it's challenging. I'm gonna take my hand around the underside of my foot. Both legs are bent. Right now I'm really curled in my spine. This isn't like I'm slouching, right? So obviously I'm gonna work away from that. Can you lift a foot off the floor? And place it down and try the other side. And one way to do that is to rock on your butt. Wee! Do you feel like a kid? Wee! <laughs> Wee! Okay. 
Um, it's always good to pause and laugh because we're gonna do some funny things now. Let's go ahead and put your right foot down. So it's gonna help you balance and, and keep your, your weight. And we're gonna take our left hand onto our left foot. And we're gonna lift that one leg up. Yeah? Okay, set that back down. Now you know where your leg is kind of gonna aim. And I'm gonna take this left arm and I'm gonna lift it up in front of my armpit like we were practicing. And I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna pat the underside of the back of my arm. So I'm patting uh, the back of my arm, above my elbow, which is right now pointing at the floor. And that's because I want you to have a kinesthetic awareness here. So you just go ahead and slap the whole back side of your arm, gently, gently, not to hurt it, just to awaken your nerves. All right, can you take the back side of this arm, please, and stick it on the inside of your leg? Yeah? might want to stay up here at first. Can you crouch your belly? Remember we talked about hollowing up? And you can slouch here to get there. Yay! Yeah, slouch and see where you can get your arm. Can you connect that back spot of your arm to the inside of the knee? Could you get it up even higher maybe? Maybe, maybe. What if you get your armpit on your knee? I know this is already bust up. See, can you wrap your elbow underneath that thigh? Good, good, good. Yeah? Okay, wherever you are is gonna determine how ridiculous this is. Can you take your right hand to your left foot and lift up? So I just rocked back, just like we did earlier. You can even grab the underside of your foot. And I want you to keep the contact between your left back of your arm and the inside of that thigh. Just maybe even rub it if you can, make a little friction. If you can get your elbow all the way in there, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah, wave to me. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, let's try the other side. So I'm going to put my left foot in front, somewhere reasonably comfortable. Ha ha. And I'm going to bring my right leg up a little bit. I'm going to rub the back of this arm. And I'm going to set it by rolling my shoulder back, elbow up, and rubbing the back of that arm. So I'm kinesthetically awake here. And I'm going to rub the back of that arm on the inside of the thigh, inside of the knee, wherever you can get it to. And it's okay if you're really tight. Maybe your elbow just barely touches your knee, your fingertips just barely touch your foot, and you're like this. Just working on getting that millimeter off, and you just do that over and over again, and you are taking strong, strengthening steps towards your goal. Yeah? So appreciate that. Value that, because it is absolutely doing the work. Yeah? Find your place. Where do you work? Where do you practice? Yeah? Okay, if you are a flexible monkey, then your thigh is going pretty far up. I do not expect that from most of us, but so that those people have something to do here, start to begin to lengthen that spine, roll your shoulders back, and just as when we were in our horse riding pose, remember we, we drew our shoulder blades back and pressed our heart forward, and that opened up our arms into our thighs, I want you to have that feeling with the back of your arm into your thigh. Yeah? All right, let that go for a second. Take those arms up. Lean it to the side. And the other side. Take your hands behind your head and pull your chin in. Yeah, the opposite of a chin poke. And lean your head back into your hands. My little shoulder over here is twinging. So I'm gonna respect that. I'm gonna take note right now that my shoulder rotator cuff on this side is already telling me it is, it is pretty maxed out for today. But I know myself, when we get into the next thing, I'm gonna to wanna to be in that arm balance. I'm gonna be so excited. So I'm gonna respect this and pull back a little bit, okay? Just telling you that because it's really hard for me to learn that, so I imagine it's hard for other people too. Okay, we're gonna come back here. Uh, it's not very important, I don't think, at this moment, whether your feet are pointed or not. If your knee's really unhappy here, come back to this position. But I'm gonna try to move us up a level, physically, from the ground. So I'm gonna tuck my foot for a moment, and I'm gonna put uh, my right knee on the floor, my right hand on the floor, my left back of the elbow under the thigh here. Yeah. Okay, from here, I'm gonna try and put my hand on the ground. Yes? Now look down at your left hand that's on the ground. This 
forearm, is, our goal is for the elbow to be over the wrist on the floor. Go ahead and come down out of that. We're going to try the other side. Yeah, when we're supporting weight, it makes perfect sense, right, that the weight should be elbow over the wrist. But when we start to learn this arm balancing, the first thing we're figuring out is that our wrist might not be under our elbow. And so the chicken wing action of pulling your, your wings back in, shoulder blades down, elbows to your sides, that's going to be how you get the elbow above the wrist. I know it might not make sense now, hopefully it makes sense as we layer. Yeah? All right. Yeah, so look down there, like, did you start like this with your elbow to the side? Did you start, it's really still straight. Can you bend that elbow? It will also help you sneak your body underneath the more you bend that elbow. Yeah, just feel that feels. Maybe even circle gently. And I do not have very much weight on this wrist, but it is quite a flex, so I'm noticing it, yeah? Okay. We're gonna do the arm balance now. We're gonna do um, left, right, left, right, left, right. Just the same pattern as we did those other challenges earlier today. Each time, you're gonna figure out if you're at your max, yeah? When you're at your max, you will notice this because your wrists, while we're doing this, why don't we <laughs> stretch these wrists just like we did earlier, pressing your, your fist down. Um, your wrists might be getting tired or you might be feeling um, Somebody was talking about shoulder cuff injury. You might feel that, you might back off, right? So our thing that we just did, where you're sitting and putting your elbow in place and kind of wiggling around, that's your bus stop A. We already did bus stop A. Yeah, so I'm gonna move us through bus stop B on both sides and C on both sides and touch on D as an extra. But I want you to work repeating your bus stop because that's where you build your strength. That's where you build your potential. Okay, so I'm going to come up to a squat, right? We're trying to move into BC area. Now, the temptation here for me is always to start elbows out. I don't know why my knees are out, my elbows want to go out. So I'm going to pull them in and I'm going to think about left side. Yeah. So set up those arms just like we did at the beginning of class. Point our fingers forward. Now in this position, my elbow's behind my wrist, so I know I'm gonna have to move forward to meet that. But what I'm gonna do is lift this heel. Watch this little trigger back there. I know it's dark underneath my leg, but by po pointing my toe, essentially, it helps me to get my weight a little bit forward. And then I'm gonna sneaky, sneaky snoo my left leg forward. And I'm really not very wide-legged at this point. All right, so now I'm gonna walk lefty underneath and I'm gonna keep sneaky, sneaky, snoo left leg to the front. And as I do that, I'm gonna try and put both thighs on both elbows. Yeah, both thighs on both elbows. Both thighs on both elbows. And I'll do the opposite side, turn to the side so you can see a little differently, okay? All right, now come on down out of that, fall back, fall into your buns. What did you notice about your hands? Because I noticed that my hands did this, which is to say they were no longer in line. Maybe that's going to be okay because for this, remember, the relationship of the shoulders and elbows and wrists is most important. Placement on the floor might change. Okay, stretch them, stretch them. We're going to do the other side. Oh, where do I want to go? I think I'm going to turn this way for you. Okay, same activity. I'm just turning to the other side. So I'm starting my squat putting my hands down, I'm sort of lifting my butt forward and then I'm walking your right leg forward and scooching my right elbow back to find my place. All right, there's your B. B plus is head on the floor. Yeah, that's your B prime. Can you drop your head on the floor? All right, fall back on your butt. Take your legs together for a moment. Shake it out. Press your wrists over the top. We're going to come through for a third next time. All right, here we go. Come on back up. All right, so if you are already like at your max, maybe we're going to try this one seated. Yeah? 
You could try it seated also as an alternate. Okay, here we go. Next try. Walking that foot forward. Here we go. Be prime. Put your head on the floor. C. Straight. Long leg. And the foot comes off. Come back. Shake your wrists out. Shake your legs out. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into it a little bit sooner so you can see me and then you can go in. Yeah. Same thing. Other side. Place it. Scooch foot. Really trying to get that elbow, back of the elbow, lined up over my wrist. Scooch foot. Head on the floor. Straighten the leg. I think I'm too far apart with my wrists. That's okay. You can also stay up, not put your head on the floor, and try taking your foot off the ground. That might be your next try. I'm gonna do one more time. My wrists are tired, so I'm sure yours are too. Okay. Soft wrists. Roll your shoulders back. You know when we get tired, Strangely enough, our muscles start to squeeze shut, and it's because they're pro protecting our joints. But they can also like end up with us stuck in a in ideal alignment. So we want to shake those out. All right, here we go. Last one. Um, keeping your heads up this time. Try and straighten that leg, and know that the the goal here. I'm going to change a little bit. I'm going to keep, we're going to do left long leg, I'm going to keep my right foot on the floor. Okay? Hands there. Sneaking left around, I'm going to straighten left and shift forward. Yeah? Now, if you feel your weight shifting forward and your elbows get up over your wrists, you might be able to take that back foot and just point the toe and you'll be up in the air. Make sure you do both sides, but take your own time. It's all over. Yeah. All right, let's take those knees together. And we're going to definitely fold those flamingos down and press past your wrists, place your head down, feel your head back again, squeeze your thighs together for a moment, even, and then release into your child's pose. In your wrists. Good, come on up. Go ahead and take a pigeon. Boof. Put that hip down for this pigeon and press your wrist forward. Ooh. Oh, no, it's a lot at once. Go ahead and switch. Good job. All right, last. Let's go ahead and take our right foot in and our left foot on top of it. So if you're really tight, um, if easy pose is already like easier with a pillow underneath you, stick a pillow underneath you for this one. It's called cow-faced pose. This will be our last pose of the day. We're gonna do it quick. Um, but just know that cow face pose looks really different as you get more flexible. So right leg's on the bottom. When you first start, it looks like a big jumble of sticks here, yeah? Your legs are all like up in the air. And as you get more flexible, your knees flatten down. So mine look really flat, but it, that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Could be way up in the air, yeah? 
tuck them down. Try and find both hips on the ground, wherever your legs are here. We're gonna take top leg, bottom arm. So that means your left leg, left arm, you're gonna give a thumbs down. You're gonna swing that thumb behind yourself and grab your shirt, yeah? Top arm is gonna swing up, thumbs up. You drop that thumb behind your chest and drag your shirt. Sit up tall to grab further together with your hands. I'm gonna turn around so you can see me from the back. The taller upright you sit, the closer your hands will get. It feels like So sit up tall, pull that chin in for a moment. This is cow face pose. Try to relax your shoulders. I know it's hard. Let your armpit open. Lots of effort to sit up tall here. On your next exhale, you're gonna breathe in. Then exhale, lean forward over your legs. Rise on up, release. Go ahead and switch sides. Left leg in on the bottom. Back up noise. Okay. So now your right leg is on the top, your right hand. Top leg is bottom arm, that's a theme all the time. Top leg is bottom arm. Cow face pose. I don't know why this is called cow face pose. I kind of imagine it's because your legs look like they could say moo here. Moo. I don't know. Drop those shoulders behind you. There's a big urge to like curl forward, but that's not, it's, it's, a, it's a misnomer. It's misleading. Big stretch in the front of your arm. Shoulder over here. Find that breath and then let yourself come forward with the exhale. Go ahead and roll it back up. Release. Unwind. And we're gonna roll ourselves down to relax. Tuck your wings behind you. Palms soft and open. I keep hearing somebody's voice and I don't know if you Are you asking for help? No? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and rest down. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Take that breath longer, visualizing it filling up your skull and radiating your top of your skull away from your shoulders, finding length. Bigger breath, reaching your fingertips away. Skull lengthens, ribs rise, belly rises. 
Exhale. Inhale, lengthening through the head, through your fingers, and reach one leg and the other. Feel your whole bed, whole leg, whole body expanding with that inhale. Big breath in. Take those arms up above your head as you come back to the room. And reach one arm up tall and open your armpit. Reach the other arm tall and open up your armpit. Spread your rib cage as big as you can. Release it down. Take your arms to the side. And turn your head to the left and the right and then drop one leg and use it to press yourself over onto the side for a moment. We always come to the side before we get up. It's just healthier for your spine. And then let that top leg reach out as you walk yourself up with your hands to return to your easy pose. Take a moment to breathe in and out. And a moment to thank yourself for all the effort you just gave, for all the patience. Even if it wasn't as much as you wanted, still have gratitude for what you were able to do today. Radical self-compassion. Go ahead and take your hands to Namaste. <sighs> Breathe into your center here. Feeling that contact between your hands. It's our class for today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for teaching me by sharing your experiences. I hope you had fun. I will see you next week. <laughs>